man does not know as much as you think he knows what about the thing, DNA code. What you're saying, basically, is that whenever we... See, what you're, what you're doing here is you're scared, and you realize that there is strong evidence against your point. Oh, I'm not and either. And all you're doing is denying the people who have the evidence. No. And you're saying, if, the, if this evidence is here, well, I'm just going to question it and just blow it off. I'm, saying, I don't I'm, doing, what, I'm it. doing what any scientist should do. When somebody says, hey, here's my evidence, I'm saying, wait, wait, wait. Have you looked at this from all sides? Oh, I, yeah. Healthy skepticism is a very good that's thing. That's what I've I got. I think that your level of skepticism is healthy. Because it goes against your theory? No, because you are just denying anything that remotely goes against what you think. You don't even want to go look at it. You have taken this little bit of evidence that two creatures have the same broken gene and jumped on that and said, No, Aha. it's not Aha. just two creatures. We're talking about the entire phylogenetic tree of, okay. of primates. Well, let's say all the primates have the same broken gene. They don't. Okay. First they, of have all, the, they have this broken gene, but it's broken in different ways. The mutation rate matches the, the mutations that are found in the right. genomes of these different but, creatures. But listen. The gene code is so incredibly complex. Just oh. chromosome 14 has 87 million base pairs. What's your point? It is so complex that I don't think modern man understands near what you think he understands about the gene code, number one. Number two, I don't think that enough research has been done to prove what you're saying is correct because what you're doing is taking modern, uh, recent research on broken chromosomes, broken genes, this is 10 years old at least, okay. actually. But if you look at the history of this evolutionary theory, all the evidence that comes up and everybody jumps on it and says, oh, wow, Piltdown Man, and they keep it in the books for 40 years oh, later. Oh, come on. Are you later it's proven wrong. Piltdown Man? Come on. What evidence do you have that has stood the test of time? This, this, has, it, this evidence has not stood the test of time yet. Well, <laughs> the theory's been out 160 years. No, genetics has not been out for 160 years. No, but the theory of evolution has. Darwin didn't even have, he didn't even know about Gregor Mendel, for God's sake. I mean, oh, he should have, and he never would have got this dumb theory out there. Oh, he would have been so much stronger in his theory, because he would have been refined at the time instead of like the neo-Darwinists having to come back later and change it. That's why a lot of people criticize Darwin. Like creationists say, oh, Darwin is falsified because he didn't know how characters were, you know, blended in the genes instead of blended by characters and blah blah blah. I mean, come on, it would have made it a stronger. Okay, case. let me finish my point. Number one, we don't know as much as we think we know about the DNA. Number two, as much as you think the scientists know about the DNA. Number two, the chimpanzee DNA has been very sparsely even examined. Uh, yeah, that's true. Okay. So here you are assuming that there's a common ancestry based on when one side of the equation has been bar barely touched. No, I think you're jumping at a conclusion because you are anxious to come to that conclusion. We're t no, the, the thing is, if you go and you, oh, my God. No, yep, don't you yep. see the problem with this? Yeah, if, I'm trying to see you If you went and sequence like turtles and rats and uh, lizards and fish, you're not going to get the same uh, structure of the vitamin C synthesizing gene. You're not going to see the same pattern. That's why it supports common ancestry for primates. That, 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 see, that's where this is your interpretation of it. No, this is not. This is where my this golf cart analogy. My golf cart analogy is perfect. No, it's not. They don't reproduce. Well, they both had a flat tire on the front left. They don't reproduce, Kent. You're, you're do using a fallacious analogy. <laughs> Please stop it. How on earth can I get you to see that this little tiny scrap of evidence that you are grasping at is so minor in the big picture when just one chromosome on chromosome 14 on humans has 87 million base pairs? So, and well, it, what does that have to do with anything? Well, I'm just trying to explain to you. We've got 47, 46 chromosomes. The complexity of the human gene code is staggering. Absolutely staggering. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's awesome to behold, but I don't see what that has to do with vitamin C. Well, let's just take an analogy and say I'm looking through a book and find on page 5, line 3, there's a typo. I look through a different unrelated book and find on page 3, ah, line 5, there's a typo. That's thing, though. Chimp, chimpanzee DNA in human day is not un like an, an unrelated book in your analogy. That's a bad analogy. We okay. know exactly... The, we... we we can look at the, at the DNA between chimps and humans and see what the connection is. Chromosomes have been fused together. Okay, you keep saying we, like you're one of these scientists The involved. scientific community. I'm saying as a human, you know, scientific enterprise. Whatever, okay. scientists. All right, so my point is, number one, we don't know as much as you think we know about the DNA. Number two, if there are broken... I, I want to question... I mean, as, as any lawyer would, I would question your evidence. I want to have this proof. I want you to question the evidence. Good. I want you to go out and read okay. this. And number three. I'll have it even more solid point. Number, number three, even if the evidence turns out to be exactly what you say, that they both have the chromosome, uh, cytochrome C chromosome uh, broken, 
No, the gene, the comes here, it's a whole other okay, gene, okay, I'm sorry. They have the vitamin C chromosome uh, gene broken in exactly the same place. That still does not prove common ancestry. Does it give evidence for common ancestry? You could interpret it as that. I what? could interpret it as evidence for a common creator or creatures living in a common environment, and the same environment causes the same damage. So it's not the fall of man. Well, I don't know. We do live in a fallen environment. I want you to explain to me how the fall of man explains this. How does the fall of man explain why l gulano gamma lactone oxidase is broken in precisely the same way between chimps and humans and that the mutations that show up when you go further back on the tree, like with gorillas and macaques, right, uh, so match up the mutation rates? Here you, here you have your theory guiding your research. Well, of course, because until you falsify it, that's what you do in science. So you, you assume evolution has happened. You take the theory as being true, and you interpret your data to fit your theory. Kent, this is like an astronomer looking out at the stars, and then somebody comes up and says, I don't believe in stars. All right. Okay. And they're like, up. well, okay. you're just using your star theory to interpret <laughs> what you see in the sky. Okay. The same hey, thing. Call in tomorrow. My time is up. We've got one minute left, and i got to get some closing comments for some of these other folks. But.